I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of Flee the Darkness for the one third of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans. We need to flee the darkness of this world. In terms of the salvation of the nation of Israel, we each have our part to play. In this particular chapter, there will be a lot of information coming your way. Please pay attention to the scriptures that show up upon the screen. Our Father has instructed us to seek Him. We must go looking for Him. The same applies in this truth. We must continually seek the Father. So if a script is unfamiliar to you, stop the chapter and go look the scripture up. Read it. Maybe the, maybe the Spirit wants you to read a little above it or a little below it. But really seek out the truth. One of the places where this is a very touchy subject for many of the nation of Israel. And many of the nation of Israel will not be able to uh, let go and flee the foolishness. They won't. But for those of you of the nation of Israel who are on the fence or who have recently found their way back to the truth, continue to seek the Father. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 13. And all thy children, Israel, shall be taught of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and great shall be the peace of thy children. And all thy children shall be taught of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, and great shall be the peace of thy children. When we seek the Father in truth and in sincerity, we shall be taught of the Father through the Holy Spirit what the truth is. The book of St. John, chapter 6, verse 44, this is Yahushai speaking. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 45, it is written in the prophets, and they, the nation of Israel, shall be all taught of the Most High power. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. So again, being taught of the Most High power through Yahweh Shai. In order to receive the truth, the Father must call you forward. And Yahweh Shai will raise us up at the last day. We come back to the Father through the Son. This is what is available unto us, the nation of Israel, when we seek the Father's glorious 
face. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 20. And though Yahweh give you, the nation of Israel, the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. So those that have been ordained by the Father to speak this word in truth and in sincerity are here on behalf of the Father and the Son, filled with the spirit of truth to teach our brothers and sisters about the light and a marker a sign to know that one is teaching in truth and in sincerity the book of the prophet isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word, the words of this Bible, the words of our Father through the prophets and the testimonies in this Bible, in this living water, this living word, it is because there is no light in them. So if this, so if the law and the testimonies aren't being spoken of, if something is being said that is contrary to this word, there is no light in them. This means that Yahawashai is not in them. This means that our anointed is not in them. For our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords and our Master Prophet has said that he is the light of the world. He has come into this darkness, this world. Remember, world means time frame, age, span of time to light the path that the Father has laid out for us. That light is truth. Because he has said time and time again that the Father is in him and he in the Father. He comes with the spirit of truth. And remember, if the Father is in him and he is in the Father, well, the Father, our Father, Yahweh, the Most High Power, the Creator of heaven and earth, the Creator of all things, the Creator and Destroyer, he cannot lie. Our Father cannot lie. And there is no darkness in Yahweh. There is no darkness in Yahweh. Now, yes, our Father forms the light, and it's a very specific thing that's stated here. I form the light, which means He formed the sons and the daughters of truth. He has formed a nation of truth. And he also creates the darkness. There were formed the sons of the Most High Power, the sons of man, and the sons of the wicked. But he forms the light. That light, again, is the truth. And where there is no truth, there is darkness. And that is of the devil. And for those who follow Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai in truth and in sincerity, ye are the light of the world. Here to show forth the truth of the Father through the Son here to show forth the spirit of truth. The book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 15, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the Most High Power, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. 
when we seek the Father through the Son and are drawn unto our teachers. Teachers, by the way. Not singular, teachers. Because you have to try the Spirit by the Spirit. And we each have a part to play. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the Most High Power, who we were formed to be, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. So wherever we have been scattered to on the four corners of the earth, there is one nation that is ruling today. That nation is the nation of the devil, which are the rulers of this last wicked kingdom filled with the spirit of Satan, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. We have the truth. We have our history. We have the prophecies and the promises. We have hope. We have hope. Many today are hopeless. Many of the other nations upon the earth today are hopeless. So just to be clear, it has been mentioned in former chapters that not every one of the other nations is an evil, wicked person. That's true. Number one, we as the nation of Israel are spread to the four corners of the earth. The ancient seed of the nation of Israel is spread far and wide upon this earth. Just because someone may look like they are of one of the other nations, they may be, in fact, an Israelite. And even if that person is not an Israelite, not all people, not every one of the other nations is an evil, wicked person. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24, And he, Yahweh Shai, answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So from his own mouth, from the mouth of the anointed, the one they call Christ, Verse 25, then came she, the Canaanite woman, a descendant of Ham, what we would consider today to be an African woman. There is a distinction and a difference between the so-called Africans and the so-called Negroes. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. So she came unto our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, and she said, Help me. And he said, Because he is only sent unto the nation of Israel, that it is not good to take the children's bread, the children's food, the children's blessings, that which is intended solely for the nation of Israel and to cast it to dogs. Now, this may be a little harsh for many of our brothers and sisters to hear, but the Father is dealing with the nation of Israel first and foremost, and this is just the way it is. Verse 27, And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Verse 28, Then Yahweh Shai answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour, because she was willing to bow down to the truth the truth that she was in the presence of the Son of the Most High Power, that all things that are being done are being done for the nation of Israel first and foremost. And what is whatever is left over, if done in respect, may be partaken of. 
understanding from whose table the blessings would come from. Understanding whose table the blessing would come from. It would come from the master's table. Set for the master's children to feed the master's children. And so those of the other nations who are not wicked and can humble themselves and bow themselves down to this truth, as Yahushai did, they may find mercy. Now, the salvation, the promises, the prophecies, the rewards of exaltation and peace, those go to the nation of Israel. But in the midst of the destruction that has begun to amplify upon the earth, those are the other nations who bow down to the truth of who Yahweh is, who Yahweh Shai is, and who the nation of Israel is, they may find mercy. And again, just to back up that the Father is dealing with the nation of Israel first and foremost, the book of St. Mark, chapter 7, verse 27, this is still Yahweh Shai with the Canaanite woman, but Yahweh said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. Verse 28 And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. So the Father's dealing with the nation of Israel first and foremost. And if the other nations can acknowledge that, there may be some mercy for them. So as our Father deals with us, the nation of Israel, as he deals with us as a nation, rarely does he deal directly with individuals. He's always dealing with nations. The book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 1. Now Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So, if you can bow down to this truth. So if you can bow down to this truth of who the sons and daughters of the Most High Power are, who the nation of Israel is, the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latin Hispanics, the so-called Native Americans. If you can bow down to the truth that Yahweh Shai, the anointed, was a dark-skinned man, and that he was sent only unto the nation of Israel, there may be mercy for you. There may be a blessing for you. The Father deals with nations. The book of Genesis, chapter 10, verse 32. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. The Father deals with nations. There's order. Even when the Father brought us into the promised land he didn't go he didn't say unto us as a nation all right i want you to go over here to the south side and tell those people to leave i want you to go over to the east side and uh, tell half of those people no he said move them all out move them all out 
The book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 24. For I, Yahweh the Most High Power, will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go up to appear before Yahweh thy Most High Power thrice in the year. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 1. When Yahweh thy most high power shall bring thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. So the Father deals with nations. So the Father deals with nations as we were moving into our land, the Father deals with nations. And the same must occur for judgment. Because when the Father punished the nation of Israel, he put us into this last captivity, not every single person of the nation of Israel was an evil, wicked person, not every single one but more than not we as a nation were wicked not following behind the commandments the statutes and the laws of our father and so the father punished the entire nation some more severely than others but the entire nation was punished scattered to the four corners of the earth so the pushback from people today so when it comes to prophecy today being fulfilled about righteous judgment because the father is a righteous judge there is a lot of pushback people don't want to hear it but the father deals with nations and even though not every one of the other nations is an evil, wicked person, every nation is going to receive the judgment that is due it. And there is no way around it. The book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 25, verse 15. For thus saith Yahweh, the most high power of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. So here the father's not talking about uh, some people over here, and some people over there. No, all the nations. All nations. All nations. Because the Father is dealing with nations. In the greatest sense of it, the Father is dealing with nations. Putting things in order. Verse 17, Then took I the cup at Yahweh's hand, and made all the nations to drink unto whom Yahweh had sent me. Verse 18, To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, and the kings thereof, and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation, an astonishment, and hissing, and a curse, as it is this day. So again, the Father's dealing with the nation of Israel first and foremost. Father starting at his own sanctuary. Because we, the nation of Israel, are the light of the world. And then we disobeyed our father as a nation. So that cup of wrath came to the nation of Israel first and foremost. And as it is written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 7, those curses, that wrath that the father poured upon us, he is starting to take off of us and put onto the other nations. And as we have served captivity of every nation upon the earth 
The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So this is what must occur to all the nations that have led the nation of Israel captive, that have oppressed us. They must be led into captivity. It's not a personal thing. It's a judgment thing. Then what else can be expected? He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Well, this, this is going to affect all nations. But there is one nation in particular that stands out. And that is the nation of Esau. Esau's blessing was that he was going to get everything by the sword. So everything he's gotten, he's gotten by the sword, by death and destruction, by war. Everything he's gotten, he's gotten through this. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience, here is the peace. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. When we know this truth and this fact, when we have this light in us, this good news in us, the good news being that whatever the Father says shall occur, shall occur, there is peace. So what else must occur? The book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 30, verse 16. Therefore all they that devour thee, Israel, shall be devoured. And all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So everyone that has stolen from us raped, robbed, and murdered us, they will serve the nation of Israel. They will serve the nation of Israel. What has been taken from us shall be given again. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1, For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, the entire nation, one-third to start with, two-thirds by the end, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Well, who rules over us today? The devil, Esau, Edom, Idumia. They rule over us today. They oppress us today. And guess what? They're going to serve us for a while. Now, for the other nations, they're going to serve their captivity until the Father says, enough. But they are going to serve the nation of Israel in captivity until the Father says, enough. And then they shall go back into their own land. All nations except one. So, remembering that the Father deals with nations, the beginning of the nation of Edom begins with Esau, who was born red and hairy all over. He is Esau, And as our forefather Jacob would go on to become Israel and the nation of Israel, 
so also did Esau go on to become Edom, the nation of the Edomites. And if you have never considered it or thought about it, the Edomites, today the so-called white nation, the Caucasians, they are the youngest physical nation upon the earth. After the flood, Noah's sons repopulated the earth. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. All dark skin. The descendants of Japheth are what we would consider to be the Polynesians today. They were also the first ones over there in Greece, Spain, what would be considered Turkey today. First ones up in Russia. All dark skinned, by the way, dark skinned. Until Esau came in and ran everyone out. But Esau, Edom, Idumia, they are the youngest physical nation upon the earth. Although spiritually, they have been around from the beginning. That spirit that they carry with them has been around from the beginning. They are the youngest. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 4. This is prophecy. And I, Yahweh the Most High Power, will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Verse 5, And the people, the nation of Israel, shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. So the nation that has been here the shortest amount of time upon the earth is going to raise itself up proudly against the ancient, against those that have been from the very beginning. And the base, because they are base men, against the honorable, the chosen bloodline and seed of the nation of Israel. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. So if we remember, it's good against evil, the godly versus the sinner. It's good against evil, the godly versus the sinner. There are only two. So of the nation of Israel, there are 12 tribes Judah being the head tribe well there are different families for Esau the nation of Edom that top family being today Amalek they are the ones that control the money. They are the ones that control the central banks. They are the ones who are truly in power. Of all the families of Esau, Edom, Mydumia, they are the top family today. Also, they are the ones that say they are the Jews. When, in fact, they are the man, the beast, the dragon. They are the man, that man being Esau. So they are the descendants of Esau. That beast being their systems of power and governance and that dragon today being their personality how they move through the earth they can move on land they can move through the air 
They can make fire come out. They've got the claws that break. It's who they are. As a nation. And they serve a purpose. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 4, Yahweh hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Even the wicked for the day of evil. Verse 5, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. So, remember the child would behave itself proudly against the ancients. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. So for everyone who thinks that they can save this nation of people, though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Severe punishment is to occur upon the nation of Esau. Edom, Idumia. The father made Esau, Edom, Idumia at the heart of it to punish the nation of Israel. To punish the nation of Israel. Now, when this season of punishment is over, what happens unto the nation of Esau, Edom, Idumia. Again, this is a touchy subject for many brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, but if you want to return to the truth and to the light, as an Israelite, you have to bow down to the truth. The second book of the prophet Esdras, chapter 6, verse 9. The books of Esdras can be found in the Apocrypha, which is the middle book of the King James 1611 Bible. For Esau is the end of the world. Remember, world means time, frame, age, span of time. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So this world must come to an end. This world must come to an end. And Esau is the end. The book of the prophet Job, chapter 21, verse 29. Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. And that's the truth. The father has made the wicked for the day of evil, and that day has an end. And that day has an end. And what does the end look like? Again, we're going to get to that cover photo. We're walking our way to it. But for now, all these things must be understood so that you can understand the truth of who the anointed is and who the anointed is not. So what shall that day look like? Returning to the book of 2nd Ezra, now chapter 7, verse 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time, the end of this world. World meaning time frame, age, span of time. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of the immortality for to come, the immortal kingdom of the nation of Israel, wherein corruption is past. There's no need for corruption. Intemperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown and truth is is sprung up. The light has come. The beautiful light of truth has its enduring place. And what about those whose judgment it is to be destroyed? 
verse 45, Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory. There is no one upon this earth that can stop the judgments of the Most High Power upon a nation. All nations upon this earth shall be judged as the nation of Israel was judged. And at the end of the judgment and captivity, they will return into their own lands and live in a world where there is justice and truth. All nations except one. The book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, against Esau, Edom, Idumea, and prophesy against it. And say unto it, Thus saith Yahweh the Most High Power, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out mine hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Verse 5, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. So our punishment, our captivity had an end, and they still murder us to this day, rape, rob, and steal from us to this day. There is no justice in them. Verse 6, Therefore, as I live, saith Yahweh the Most High Power, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee, since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Well, their blessing was the sword. They've done a lot of killing. There is a lot of blood. So a lot of blood must follow them. They must be met with a lot of blood by the Father through the Son. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Verse 22, For I will rise up against them, saith Yahweh of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith Yahweh. Well, without males, there's no seed to bring forth children. Without the males, there are there's no seed to bring forth children. It is also written that the father's going to cut off the name and the remnant. So, they are going to go into captivity. Serve captivity. And while they're in captivity... Their numbers, as they have started actually, will continue to dwindle. So, with all that being said, how can this Edomite, this descendant of Esau, of Mount Seir, be the savior of the world to come? How is that possible? How will that be possible if the entire line is to be cut off? If the entire name is to be taken away? How is it possible that this is the Savior 
of the world to come. It has been stated clearly. Everyone wants to run around and say God is a God of love. God has said clearly, Esau have I hated. Esau have I hated. Because they were used to punish us. And he had to make them as wicked as he did. So if you're not familiar, or you haven't been paying attention, or if you have swallowed down everything that you have been spoon-fed by your oppressors, here's why the father hates Esau. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 20. Thou, Esau, Edom, I do me, sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Remember, Jacob and Esau were brothers in the womb of our foremother, Rebekah. Sons to our forefather, Isaac. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I, Yahweh the Most High Power, kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I, the Most High Power, was altogether such as one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So Esau thought because of the father's silence that he was one with the Most High Power. That the Most High Power approved of his behavior. But remember, the father abhorreth, hateth pride. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 13. For thou, Esau, hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the Most High Power. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will sit as the Most High Power above the nation of Israel. A child behaving proudly against the ancients. I'm going to take these people and have my way with them. I'm going to take everything from them. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High Power. And through this, and through this, The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him, which deceiveth the whole earth. They are the only nation upon the earth to picture themselves as the Most High, as the Son of the Most High, as the angels of the Most High, as the prophets of the Most High, 
and as the daughters of the Most High, the only nation upon the earth to do it. The Ammonites haven't done it, the so-called Japanese. The Moabites haven't done it, the so-called uh, Chinese. The Elamites haven't done it, the so-called uh, Indians and Pakistanis. No other nation has done it but Esau. Esau have I hated. So here is Esau portraying himself as the Most High, the Son of the Most High, the Angels of the Most High, the Heavenly Host of the Most High, the Daughters of the Most High. And while doing so, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Lest there be any fornicator. So here is Esau, who, by the way, knew the Most High power because he was raised in the house of our forefather, Isaac and our foremother Rebecca. So he knew who the Most High Power was, turned his back on the Most High Power. Just turned his back on the Most High Power. Then goes on to proclaim himself as the Most High Power and the Son of the Most High Power while serving every single power under the heavens. They have also painted and portrayed themselves as Greek powers, Zeus, Apollo, Aphrodite, as Roman powers, Jupiter, Mars, Juno. They have portrayed themselves as the wind and as the god of the ocean. That They throw the lightning bolts themselves. They claim to be the most high power and then serve every single power under the sun every single power under the sun and then today for many upon this earth he has you bowing down to him he has you bowing down and worshiping him the devil has you bowing down and worshiping him. But if you believe the words of this Bible, how is it possible that a descendant of Esau, Edom, Idumia, shall be the savior of the new world? How is it possible? And then as a parting gift, having you bow down to him as a little parting gift to you. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High Power, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. As it is written, if any man worship the beast, which is the systems of power and governance, because it is the man, the beast, the dragon, and his image and his image and his image and his image the book of revelation chapter 19 verse 20 and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. 
and them that worship the image. The book of the prophet Job, chapter 8, verse 13. So are the paths of all that forget the Most High power, and the hypocrites' hope shall perish, whose hope shall be cut off, and whose trust shall be a spider's web. They trust in webs of lies and deceit and snares and traps. This is what their trust is in. Verse 15, he shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. Esau has an end. The wicked have an end. Remember, the house of the wicked shall be destroyed. It shall be overthrown. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. There is an end. And Esau is the end. So, if he can't even save himself, how will he save you, Israel? The last scripture we're going to in this chapter is Returning to the book of the prophet Job, now chapter 20, verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, a child behaving proudly against the ancients. One saying, I am the Most High Power. I am the Son of the Most High Power. I am the angels and the people of the Most High Power. I'm also all these other powers, and I'm the power of the wind, and I'm the power of the sun, and I'm the power of everything. No one is above me. Verse 7, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Verse 8, he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The Father has made the wicked for the day of evil, and that day is coming to an end. And when the day is over, so are they. Flee the foolishness. Make no mistake about it. World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahweh Shai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahweh Shai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Yahweh is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world, remember who you are, and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.